Alright folks, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Lesson 7, Configuring Internet Explorer 11. This will cover Exam Objective 2.4 in your book today. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the differences, some of the features, some of the things that we can configure in IE 11. Uh, and uh, one of the first and foremost things I want to talk about is the fact that IE 11 has two distinct interfaces. So, what you see on the right hand side of the screen today is the desktop interface that you are probably most familiar with. As you can see, it looks very similar to previous versions of IE. Not much different. All the functionality is at the top of the screen. However, I have the ability now to launch Internet Explorer 11 simply by clicking the tile on the start screen. You'll initially see a screen with some dark colored address bar along the bottom, and then you'll open up and you'll end up with a full page view of the web page content. You'll also notice that the functionality of IE11 has shifted to the bottom of the screen if you do it through the start screen interface. Likewise, if you use the settings in IE through the start screen, it's going to have a settings menu similar to the one that you see on the left hand side of the screen. Pretty much similar to most start screen applications that you may use or launch from the tiles. With that said, there are some differences in Internet Explorer. Of course, Internet Explorer 11, just like earlier versions, will probably satisfy most users' needs right out of the box. However, some of the features may require some configuration. For instance, Compatibility View. Compatibility View has not gone away. It's not as prevalent as it used to be in earlier versions of IE. And the reason why we have Compatibility View is because, if you remember IE7, when IE7 and IE8 came out, IE8 was fundamentally different than IE7 and there were a lot of web developers, a lot of websites that were not on board with the new functionality of IE8 which created a lot of compatibility issues. So many compatibility issues in fact that Microsoft ended up having to do a backpedal and come up with the compatibility view in order to view a lot of these websites. Over the years most of that functionality has been incorporated by web developers to most websites. Still, the compatibility view is still available. How? Simply by going to the Tools menu, going to Compatibility View Settings. Here you can add a website. When you hit Close, as you can see, it will reload with the pre-IE7 interface. Likewise, if I know the website is, is going to be compatible with the latest uh, browser, compatibility views, I can go and fix that as well. What else is new or different in IE11? Well, for one thing, just like earlier versions of IE, the policy settings and Active Directory policy settings are still going to be functional in Internet Explorer 11. Things like turning on Internet Explorer 7 standards mode for all users or turning off compatibility view or turning on compatibility standards for local internet and even one of the latest things is that Microsoft now keeps a list of, it, of websites with compatibility issues and just like uh, operating system updates it will funnel those down for distribution to your users. You can configure through Active Directory group policy which of your users or whether your users need that kind of functionality in your Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is by far the easiest browser to administrate from Active Directory. Mozilla has its benefits, however, and I'm certainly not saying that Mozilla should not be available to your users, but when it comes to securing or providing functionality or features for your users and you want to configure it using Active Directory Group Policy, then IE is the tool for you. Now, managing add-ons. Add-ons are still around, of course. Uh, add-ons allow us to have increased functionality on our web browsers. So, if you go into here and manage add-ons, you'll see that there are several different types of add-ons available. Toolbars and extensions, of course. Search providers can be added on. In this case, I've added Saiku. Um, accelerators. Uh, Accelerators allow me to take the content from one web page and incorporate it into another web page, which allows me to uh, save time when it comes to pulling up data. Maybe I want to 
pull up an address in one website and then have Bing map it uh, in another, I can do that with an accelerator. And tracking protection is another one of these safeguards where I can actually go in and create a personalized list of websites where I know I do not want to have uh, my web content tracked. Uh, and you can actually get a tracking protection list online simply by clicking this link. Likewise, if you want to improve or add search providers, toolbars, extensions, or accelerators, you can do this simply by going in to the Internet Explorer Gallery. And as you can see, there's a whole list of search providers that are available. And you can go in and add accelerators and improve the functionality of your web browser. Uh, the web browser, of course, is the primary application that most people use to access the Internet. Uh, this also creates a major uh, point of access for malware and exploitation from evildoers. So we like to talk about and look for always ways that we can better secure our web browser environment. One of those ways that we like to secure the web browser in Internet Explorer is using protected mode. This is an operational state designed to prevent attackers uh, that would like to penetrate the computer's defenses and access and modify the vital system components. Protected mode essentially protects us from that. Uh, it is a way to run Internet Explorer with reduced privileges. There are several different options available when it comes to protected mode. Uh, we manage those uh, through a feature called Mandatory Integrity Control. This allows us three different modes of access levels, high, medium, and low, depending on the functionality needed for particular websites. For instance, if I need a high integrity access level, then I can actually run it at the administrator privilege level. This would be for things like my intranet sites that may be running uh, financial web-based financial software and need to interface with uh, a database on the machine. Uh, this would allow me the privilege to do that. By default, if you go to a website, you're going to be running at medium integrity access level. That is a process that's going to be granting limited access to the system. It will allow you write access to specific user areas such as the user's documents folder and a registry key in the current user registry. Uh, all those processes that are not explicitly assigned and integrity access level will receive this level of access. Last but not least, the lowest level of access, the untrusted privilege level. This really grants a minimum level of access to uh, basically uh, write access only to the temporary internet files, low folder, which is the uh, HKEY current user software, Microsoft Internet Explorer, low registry registry key. That low registry registry key allows uh, for just enough write access, uh, just enough write privileges to allow some functionality on the website, but the goal is to try to el limit that functionality to a one-time only access uh, so that when things get written or maybe an exploit gets put on the machine, it doesn't have the ability to write into the startup menu. It doesn't have the ability to launch uh, the next time the operating system is booted up. Okay, so mandatory integrity control is one of the several ways that we can secure IE. Now, because protected mode, uh, because of the functionality it limits, there is the potential for incompatibilities. With that said, uh, you might find that applications that did not run IE version 7 may run in IE 11 using those default settings. Uh, once you have determined the exact source of your application's incompatibility, you can use some techniques to try to resolve the problem. Things like moving the site to the trusted site zone, thereby raising the level uh, of the MIC. Uh, you can disable the protected mode in IE altogether, or I can, mod not that that's recommended by the way, don't do that unless you have no other recourse. And of course, I can also modify the application. All right.
Enhanced protected mode. Enhanced protected mode is an extension of protected mode. It is new in IE 11. The enhanced protected mode blocks unauthorized ac access to the addition system resources, things like uh, personal information, corporate network resources, and so on. Uh, the enhanced protected mode, uh, simply by going in, you can say uh, you know, tools, internet options, go into advanced, and then you can go in and enable and scroll all the way down here to uh, S down to the SSL stuff and you can see that right here I can enable enhanced protected mode all right so I'm gonna hit cancel there all right that's so that's how you enable enhanced protected mode now I can configure security zones just like I could in earlier versions of IE there are four zones restricted sites self-explanatory these are sites that I do not want to have my users access or I don't want to access there's the internet sites this is the de facto default uh, zone for websites that are not classified anywhere else local intranet sites these are sites for specific functionality uh, through my local intranet uh, and of course trusted sites which gives it the highest level of MIC functionality okay how do we do that well let's go into tools and then we can go into da, 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 tools and then go to internet options and then go into security and then you can see right here the four now this is the def so each one of these as you notice every time I click on one of these you can see the allow levels for this zone this is completely configurable if I don't like the one of the five chosen uh, predefined levels I can go into custom levels and I can tailor specifically how I want my functionality for web pages or websites in listed in that zone what can be enabled what cannot run things of that nature can be pre uh, configured uh, specifically uh, customized for whatever experience I want okay all right so smart screen filter Internet Explorer does include the smart screen filter the whole point of the smart screen filter is to examine traffic for evidence of phishing activity that's pH phishing activity phishing is when we have uh, websites or web content that are designed to glisten information from our users things like uh, their banking account numbers their uh, usernames and passwords their uh, passwords to their email accounts and uh, there are sites that are become known for phishing sites and Microsoft maintains a list of those phishing sites uh, and that you have several techniques to identify those phishing sites I can use the online lookup tool provided through Microsoft for phishing sites or for download sites uh, which may have sites that are phishing download type stuff and of course I can do on-site analysis as well last but not least I can disable smart screen filters simply by going into tools icon and then select safety turn off smart filter dun, dun, dun. smart green filter turn on and turn off see very simple all right in private mode in private mode it allows me to surf the internet without having to leave a record of my activities to use in private browsing I simply click the safety button in the toolbar I then say in private browsing turn on and when I do you'll see that our web page has opened up this web page will not uh, it leaves a very very small footprint on websites that it goes to and this will help protect your privacy when I'm done I can click it out and then I can use the original web page to do my my normal web browsing undisturbed browsing with certificates uh, secure sockets layer is a protocol that most websites are going to use for securing our connections over the internet so we use this as to use SSL it's based on public key inf infrastructure or PKI 
It requires two encryption keys, a public one and a private one. Uh, a web server participating in PKI receives a digital certificate from someone like uh, VeriSign. Uh, VeriSign sells them a private key. They use that to generate a public key. They give you the public key when you set up a session with them to encrypt the data to and from their website. Since they've got the private key, they're able to decrypt that data and so on throughout that session. And that allows for a tunnel to be created through the website to protect and encrypt your data. All right, so browsing with certificates. Uh, I do have the ability to go in and create and, and store certificates uh, for my web browser. You can go in and manage those certificates as well. All right, so that's pretty much it. Pretty, uh, pretty simple, uh, quick chapter. Uh, just to summarize, many of the pages in the internet still conform to old standards. And IE11 may not display them properly, so the compatibility view settings are still in place even in this incarnation of IE11. Uh, one of the ways that Internet Explorer interacts with other resources is through the use of add-ons. Uh, add-ons, of course, are separate software components. They're created by Microsoft or by third parties. Accelerators enable users to send content to other resources in the form of applications running on the computer other, or other sites on the Internet. Uh, and the accelerators will enable you to highlight content in a browser window. You can select the accelerator for the resource you want to receive that content. That's fine. Many websites uh, provide frequently changing content, such as news sites, blogs. Uh, they push technology out. Now, that's called RSS, which we didn't talk about in this chapter. Um, most people by now have some idea what RSS is, but basically RSS is a protocol used when you want to receive feed in a timely manner, uh, it's pushed out through the web interface uh, through a process called RSS. Protected mode, of course, is a way to run Internet Explorer with highly reduced privileges. There's uh, basically three settings of a protected mode uh, that are available. And of course, we also have to protect our web browser. We have the uh, smart screen filter which will allow us to keep track of phishing websites and we'll do on-site um, analysis as well to try to help eliminate coming in contact with uh, people who are trying to fish information away uh, out of you. That's all I have for this chapter. I hope you have a good uh, good week and uh, you might want to watch the videos I've put in place uh, this week that give you a pretty good demonstration of IE11 and uh, we'll talk with you next week.